Hello again, it's Eric AC9BX with what hopefully is a quick repair video of this portable multiband radio from the 1970s. This is an Iowa AR158 and it has a uh, audio problem. An interesting feature of this radio, to switch to battery operation, you take the power cord and plug it into an outlet in the back. Uh, internally are a couple of uh, little connectors and it routes the battery power through the metal prong of the plug. All right, getting into the radio is a little tricky. Uh, the wiring between the front and the back portions of the case are rather short, so you have to disconnect a few things in order to make it work. All right, here we are inside a little better. I've disconnected the antenna uh, that frees up one of the wires. Be careful of that one, breaking the wire off the chrome-plated uh, antenna assembly. Uh, it's very difficult to solder back on, so you have to really watch that. Um, here's the connector on the inside that I was talking about. Uh, you put the power cord in through the slots in the back, and uh, it uh, jumps in here in between these two metal tabs to switch to battery operation. I've disconnected the power supply uh, wire coming in. It's a little too short to really get anywhere. It goes over to this board here. Uh, the power transformer, filter cap, and some old green diodes in here make the power supply. Uh, this radio has an issue with the audio output. Uh, it works fine uh, or similar, I should say. It works the same whether you're listening to the AM section or the FM section. Uh, the volume jumps up and down, and when, if you give it a little rap, it'll uh, change. It'll get better and worse. It misbehaves. So that tells us it's in the audio section, and uh, this radio has an extra board. You have the main radio board up above here, uh, but driving the speaker comes from this audio amplifier section. There's two transistors tacked on top of this transformer and another transformer here. Uh, this is the audio amplifier as a separate piece. Kind of interesting. I have the amplifier board removed and underneath it is some foam which has gotten completely dry and disintegrating. So I'm just going to vacuum all that out of there. The problem on this amplifier is this resistor right here, this 10k ohm resistor. Um, it's fastened down to the board so tightly on the one end and soldered in place um, and over time as this heats and cools it actually pulls the lead out of the internal structure of the resistor making it intermittent. Now all back together, replace the 10k resistor and eh, controls aren't bad. I cleaned them up, so it does a pretty good job, not too noisy. And uh, I'm down in the basement, so reception is really awful, but... The uh, FM broadcast band. And there's the uh, AM broadcast band. Radio. There we are. And I doubt I'll hear much of anything on uh, the shortwave bands down here in the basement on the little pull up rod antenna. Yeah, if I attached a proper antenna to it, we'd probably hear something. But... And let's try the VHF. And here's National Weather Service. Down here in the public service area. Oh, yeah. I'm getting some 
public service signals and some data. data system. There's no squelch on this, so it makes listening to these sort of things kind of a hassle. And uh, it does get a little bit of the two-meter amateur band down here at the bottom. And the last dial marking is 148, so we get a little something down there, but, but not a heck of a lot. And then uh, you know, the other VHF is uh, in AM, that's the aircraft band. And uh, yeah, we do hear aircraft uh, There's some air traffic right there. I got. I just got hit by some water chop. That's why I slowed down. There we are. It's fun. It works. Tone control. The selectivity is pretty bad. The sensitivity is only mediocre. But you know, there it is. It's fun and uh, nostalgic. And uh, I uh, spent uh, many hours in my youth listening to uh, not this very same one, but the same model one, just like it.